Um, I see that it's already three o'clock, so let's start. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Julius, and I'm uh, the founder and CEO of Cloudwiser that is uh, hosting today's uh, workshop. We also have uh, Evan here who will be delivering the workshop. Um, Evan, you want to say hi to the audience? Hi, everyone. Okay. Um, I'm very happy to have uh, all of you joining this event, and uh, I hope you'll find it interesting and, and useful. And before we begin, let me just say a few words about uh, Cloudwiser and what we do for those who haven't uh, heard of us before. So uh, Cloudwiser is an advanced tier AWS partner operating in, uh, the, in the Baltic states, that is Lithuania, Latvia, and Estonia. Uh, we work closely with AWS uh, to support the current AWS users in the, use, in, in, in the region and, of course, uh, attract some new ones as well. Uh, our main business line is AWS Resell uh, that is being used by a number of uh, companies in the Baltics. So if your company is using AWS, I definitely suggest you check out the benefit packages that uh, we offer uh, as a bonus to your AWS spend. Uh, next to that, we try to do a lot of things to build the local AWS community, and this workshop is a good illustration of that. Uh, Evan will be today will be our speaker, and my role will be to support him along uh, the way. So, before passing the scene to him, I just want to mention uh, two things regarding the workflow of uh, today's event. So first of all, uh, your questions are very welcome. I, I saw that we already have, have one and hopefully more will come. Uh, please submit them uh, in the Q&A section or, or the chat and uh, we'll go through them uh, at the end of, of, of the workshop or maybe we'll, we'll find a few slots uh, during the, the, the workshop to, to cover some of them. And uh, this event is uh, being recorded uh, and we'll share the recording with everyone uh, most probably tomorrow. So uh, that's all from my side. Uh, Yemen, are you ready to take over? Yes, hi. So yeah, uh, my name is Yevhan and uh, today I will be talking about how I fell in love with serverless. Uh, yeah, let me start sharing my screen. I believe you can see my screen here. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'll turn off my video so everyone is can hear me about that better. So yeah, uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I am working as a DevOps for more than 10 years and uh, like honestly more than seven years. And uh, before that I've been working in IT as a system administrator. So in a DevOps, I'm more ops rather than dev. Uh, last year I win, I won a game day. Uh, it's a competition between AWS partners. So me and my team, we got the first place and that was a really cool competition. Uh, some time ago, I believe it was 2016, I got my AWS Solution Architect Associate uh, certificate. However, I was a little bit lazy to renew it. So it's expired, but still I got it some day ago. And yeah, I'm, I'm living and working in uh, Riga, Latvia. So about serverless and uh, why I like it, I will, I will start with my... Uh, story of my life, I believe uh, some of you face the same stuff that uh, if you work with computer, everyone around uh, me thinks that uh, you can do everything with computer. So 10 years ago, it was uh, something like, oh, could you please install something on my laptop or computer? Or could you please fix it or something, something like that? But now uh, it's, it's more like, oh, I would need a web page. Could you please do me some web page? And uh, it's pretty hard for me to explain that, you know, I am DevOps, I am I'm working with computer, I'm managing them. However, I'm not the developer because uh, most of the people who haven't worked with uh, computer or in IT sphere, they don't really care about different professions in IT. So if you work with computer, you know everything. So for that reason, I started uh, to think, how can I help those people who are asking me about such thing? And uh, how can I make or publish their website easily uh, and uh, make it, you know, 100% one uh, uptime, have uh, no time span on maintenance. So they are happy and I'm happy. And, you know, I, I don't feel guilty that, you know, they asked me to do something and I didn't help. 
So for that reason, I have I come to serverless. I found it really nice. So I will try to share my experience with it and uh, some uh, some stuff I did there. So I believe everything uh, started as a serverless when AWS announced lambdas. So uh, by the definition, uh, lambdas allow you to run code without starting a server or managing a server. And the benefit of that is that you are paying only for compute time, not for time when your virtual server is up and running, but only for the time when you when you did something. So the cool thing about this is that uh, you don't need to do any maintenance. So it just you put your lambda somewhere, it runs, and you are happy. So let me try. To to show you how it works in a real life scenario. So for that, uh, you can also do the same as me, but uh, maybe later. Uh, let me try to, uh, I, I, I've already connected to my AWS console. So you can see here, like some services I'm using. And here we can type Lambda and start checking that. So for today, I prepared really uh, small Lambda code. Uh, if here is uh, someone who uh, did some coding in JavaScript, uh, it's a really smart, really small uh, application or really small, small uh, uh, code here. So it, def it just uh, replies on everything with status code 200 and with some body which is hello from Lambda. So I will be able to test it. I will be able to press on test. And here I have some result and here I have JSON with status code and with my body. So what I wanted to show here is that I have some code. I put it somewhere in AWS services. I was able to press on the button and run it. Before that, I believe like five years ago, when we need to do something similar, uh, if I need to run some any uh, JavaScript code, I will start my own terminal in, on my computer. Or if I need to do it remotely, I will uh, start server in AWS, will need to SSH there, log in there, and then I will need to run that code. So now it, it looks a little bit easier. And also you can see here some, uh, some uh, details. So for example, for that execution of that uh, Lambda code, AWS will charge me for 100 milliseconds. As I am using free tier for that, and AWS provides really nice package for free here, that will cost me zero in the end. Okay, so let me move on. So that's Lambda, and that's uh, the easy way to explain what is serverless. Like you can do something without starting server in the cloud. Okay, so let's move on. And uh, here, let's talk a little bit about uh, what is web applications. Uh, I would simplify all of them in uh, this screen or this picture. I believe that uh, some people who are uh, working as uh, developers or working in uh, various IT companies, you will say, oh, that's really simplified picture. We have much, much more things like that. But let's say that I would like to divide each web application into three parts, which is front end, which is back end, and which is data some data which you are storing about your users, your customers, your orders, and stuff like that. So let's go to front-end. And in most scenarios, front-end, it uh, consists of uh, some HTML, uh, CSS, JavaScript, and images. That's what comes to your web browser. Uh, sorry, let, oops, not the incorrect one. Let me make it full screen once more. So that's what see your browser. I do understand that on, on your side or on server side, you might have different stuff like uh, PHP or any other pro programming languages, but for on web client or on web, uh, web browser level, you will see HTML, CSS, JavaScript, and images. So also front end in most cases require some uh, web server, which is Apache or Nginx, or it could be also part of a backend. And uh, you know, if you want to increase speed of load of your website, you would like to use some kind of CDN, 
and also you would like to use some kind of security uh, firewalls, uh, for example, Cloudflare to defend against uh, some uh, DDoS attacks and stuff like that. So if you're talking about serverless here, uh, the first thing or first AWS service which uh, I would start with is uh, S3. So S3 is uh, just a simple object storage. You can put there anything, any amount of uh, objects or any size of object. And also as a side effects of that, you can uh, make them publicly available. So they will be like a website. So let me just show it to you. Here's time for demo. Uh, so yeah. Um, yep. Yeah, man. Uh, yes. I see the chat uh, request. Could you like make uh, the demo window full screen or, or, or bigger? Just it's it's a bit difficult to see. Uh, maybe just just zoom in. I don't know. So I hope it's better now. And let's hope it's better. I, I believe this part should be. Yeah, busy. this one. It seems okay, but just just the demo window. I, I guess you know. Then it's it's. Uh, okay. So we have smaller screens. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So yeah, uh, S three. So S three is an object storage, and one thing you should remember about uh, serverless and uh, AWS that all things you have to do it will be in the uh, US, West, North Virginia region. So when now we will create, we will be creating a bucket. Uh, here I will change my uh, region to North Virginia. So, and uh, here it asks to put a DNS compliant bucket name. So it's kind of as a domain name of my future website. And uh, I've been, I've delegated uh, to route 53, uh, one DNS zone. So let me just pick up some nice name here. So for example, server less.aws.yevhen.net. So I, I'm owner of yevhen.net domain name. I will put it, I, I have aws.yevhen.net on uh, road 53 here, here in account. So I will be able to create the DNS record later on. So, okay, I've put bucket name. I've choose correct region. So I, I will press on next. Uh, here, uh, here is various options. So you can put some versioning, you can put some service uh, access login stuff. Uh, I would recommend you to check later on about all these options. Uh, here is something which uh, you have to read. So about public access in uh, most scenarios for sure you would like to have your files stored securely, but as we are, as we will be doing a website which should be publicly accessible. So I will remove the stick here and I will acknowledge that I will, I'm doing that uh, bucket public. So press next, here is a review. So create bucket. So now we should be able to see my bucket here and there is nothing inside. So first thing I would like to do, I would like to upload here something, but before that, I will go to properties and here is stat uh, static website hosting. Uh, so I can put, use this bucket to host a website. And for index document, I will use index HTML. For error document, I will use the same and no redirects. I'll press on save. So now here I have a URL, I can access uh, my website. Yeah, because there is nothing, I am getting 403 error, which is expected. But now you can see that that uh, DNS name is valid. So let me upload here something. So we will see a website. Okay, someone is unmuted. Okay, uh, previously I downloaded some website. So I'll just upload to index HTML and some assets. Uh, that's what I want to upload, pressing on next. Here is one thing which I have to change. So manage public permissions. By default, AWS tries to secure you. So it uh, tries to make all files 
private, but now I need to change to grant public read access to the object. Press next. Uh, AWS has different storage classes. Uh, so if you le less, in, uh, less often you're asking for a data, then cheaper you can have your uh, website. For the, but as for demo, as for one day, I will just use standard here. And yeah, I will upload the files. So here we can see progress. And let's wait until it will be uploaded. Uh, yes, so let me refresh my website. And you see, I, I've got just some templates from, from somewhere. So I have a website here. So that's the first part. And uh, that was to demo that there is an easy way how I can have a static HTML website, put it in the folder or in the S3 bucket in AWS, and I, I will have it publish it like this. However, there is a second problem or next problem is that that URL. I believe uh, not lots of people will, would like to have it like that. And you know, share that there is like domain name plus stuff like that. So AWS proposed the way how we can solve it. And so next we are going to the next service, which is Amazon CloudFront service. So CloudFront service, I hope that everyone can read what is written here. By default, it's a global content delivery network, which allows uh, your end user to get your files quicker uh, with high transfer speed. So why so? Because AWS has uh, different data centers across the globe. You can see that there is regional uh, centers and they have also additional data centers here. So for example, if we used US to host our S3 bucket, but you have client who is living, for example, in Australia, then instead of downloading a file from US, first time for sure user will be waiting for downloading files to, from US to uh, Australia, but then uh, files will be cached here and uh, user, will be, uh, user will be downloading local copy of the files here. So that's uh, what CloudFront is doing. But also it allows us to use S3 as a origin from, for the files and it allows us to do some additional stuff. Under additional stuff, I mean that uh, SSL certificate, I believe that uh, in a few months or in a few year, uh, Google and some other uh, Chrome and some other browsers, they will block access to unsecure websites. So uh, now if you are trying to access HTTP, uh, you will see a red uh, warning that this website is insecure and uh, for sure, you would like to have a SSL certificate for your website to, to have a nice green certificate or nice green uh, lock here, like on have connection is secure. And you can buy certificate on your own. And there is various prices. Like today I bought certificate with uh, uh, four common names for a few hundred euros. I believe it's kind of big amount of money for just simple certificate. And AWS provides those certificates for free. There is only one uh, drawback. You can't take it outside of AWS. So you can use it only inside AWS and only with AWS services. For example, you can't uh, download it and use with your Nginx uh, web server, but you can use it with AWS load balancer, for, for example. So let me do... Uh, let me show what the certificate manager, how it works and uh, how, how connect S3 bucket with CloudFront and uh, certificate manager. There is one only thing which I have to remind and remember that uh, in order to use CloudFront with SSL certificate with Cloud, from certificate manager, everything should be done in North Virginia region. So let me go back here. Uh, but let me 
back and copy my website name. So let me go to certificate manager here. Here is a get started button. Uh, I will be requesting a public certificate. You can also have a private authority, but I, I, I believe it's quite expensive there. Uh, so it will ask for domain name. I will use the name which I created. So you can, you can attach to that uh, certificate some more names, but for my case, I just need that one. I, I can think about www.z1, but okay, let, let's do without it. So I'm pressing on next. So here is uh, uh, two options, how to validate that you are owner of the domain. So uh, bottom one, email val validation, means that uh, AWS will try to find uh, who is registered as an owner on, of the domain and send email to admin at domain.com or something like that. Or there is another way, it's a DNS validation. So you have to create a DNS record in your domain to prove that you're owner, that you have access to a DNS server. So for my case, it will be much easier to do that with DNS validation. I'm pressing here on next. I can name or put some tags on that certificate. So I'll just name it accordingly. So here is review window and uh, confirm and request. So now AWS will try to validate my domain name and uh, that I'm owner of that domain name. And as I have a root 53 record in the same AWS account, uh, it allows me to create record in root 53 from here. So I pressed it created and let me copy that part. So I will create root 53 service just to show that I have zone here delegated. So here is my AWS Johan.net and we can see that AWS created that record for me just pressing on that button. So AWS did some tricks to integrate uh, services between each other. So now let's wait here and let's see if certificate is issued. So AWS checked everything and uh, got the, uh, and change the status of the certificate to issue it. So now I can use it. So our, my, my next step will be then to go to CloudFront. Uh, okay, sorry, wrong service. Uh, CloudFront is here, but I have to change my, uh, okay, CloudFront is global. So there is no need to change to region, but I have to, check if I did certificate in the correct place. Sorry for that. Yeah, I, I used Frankfurt. So I won't be able to see that certificate. Let me just show it to you. So if I create a uh, distribution cloud front, then I will go get started here. And uh, in the bottom, it will propose me to use default cloud front certificate or custom SSL certificate. And here in the list, you see, I don't see my certificate because it was created in a different region. So let me go quickly and create certificate in the correct region. I will delete that one. That's something which I'm always, all the time doing mistakes. So here I have more certificates because I have some stuff. And uh, yeah, I will be using the same domain name, uh, DNS validation, uh, tag will be name, value z1, and uh, confirm and request. Yeah, let's go continue, and it should be quickly. Yeah, it's the validation succeeded, so should be green now. Cool. So let me go to CloudFront. 
create distribution, get started, domain name. Uh, so I've created a serverless bucket here. Uh, origin pass, I will put nothing. Uh, here is nothing, nothing, nothing. I would like to have a direction from HTTP to HTTPS, not both. Um, allow it HTTP method as I, it's a HTML, plain HTML, then uh, get and head would be enough for me. Um, nothing here to change, nothing here to add. Yeah, I can uh, check whenever it will put uh, hash, uh, caching. So I can use only US. I can have it uh, around the globe and uh, all edge location. So difference is only in the price. So assets demo, I will use US, Canada, and Europe. However, if you will have some clients in Asia or other parts of the world, please change that. So here, as I'm not using a cloud front provided to my name, I will be using my alternative to my name. I have to post, put it here. And then I will check for my certificate, which is also here. And uh, policy, that's it. And only thing I have to put here is a default root object. It should be index HTML, the same as my file on S3. So create distribution. And that will take five, 10 minutes. So here is a thing when we can a little bit wait. So everyone can try to do the same stuff on our own, on your own. Um, also, I, I prepared the, another cloud from the distribution yesterday, so we can continue using that. Uh, yeah, and maybe you want to also maybe cover a question or two, just uh, if, mm -hmm. there's, if there's time for that, what do you think? Yeah, so last two questions, I believe they are somehow connected about using Java and Lambda. Mm -hmm. uh, so would you would you like to leave yeah. it uh, at the end? Uh, yeah, that part I be, I would believe that it would be nice to leave in the end because uh, that's more related to the backend part rather than front end. Okay, yeah. So then then let's leave it. Uh, yeah. At, at the very end. If there is someone who has questions about first part uh, regarding S three cloud front uh, certificate manager, or front end in overall, like please post your message or post your question. Or I'll try to answer. Okay, so I will continue with another bucket as there is no questions. So uh, that's a bucket I've created, uh, CloudFront distribution I created yesterday. And yeah, it works. So the same website as uh, it was in previous, you can see that here, it uh, gives me green certificate. AWS signed certificate, which is uh, for one year. Uh, one Another benefit of using certificate manager is that uh, it will be renewed automatically. If you keep that DNS record, which was created by me or pressing on the button, uh, if you if you keep it, then it will be automatically renewed and uh, you don't need to worry Oh, and check when will be your expiration date. Okay. And uh, let, let me back to my slides. So I have demo how to create that. And uh, here is a time for some conclusions. So we have used uh, three AWS provided services, which is S3, CloudFront, and Certificate Manager. Uh, I believe that uh, I'm the price of usage of using those three services are quite small. So uh, S3 will charge you per gigabyte of information you store there. For example, I have some home backup and uh, it's like 40 gigs of information I, I'm storing on S3. And uh, AWS charges me around uh, eight bucks per month for that. So if you have a few megabytes of the website uh, stored on S3, then you will pay maybe a few cents per, per month for that. Uh, also, you will save some money because you're using certificate manager. As I said, that uh, you can buy certificate or you can use uh, 
free uh, certificates for, uh, which are valid for three months, but you will need to each three months to be stressed a little bit and uh, like verify if your certificates have been renewed or make some scripting around that. And also as a benefit or as a present from AWS, you will get a cloud front. So your files will be de delivered faster to your uh, users rather than uh, downloading from data centers in US or any other part of our directory. So as I didn't start any server, there is no need to do any maintenance, which is cool and uh, which allows me as a DevOps to free my time to do something better and play maybe with some automations. And uh, yeah, last part is about versioning. Uh, I didn't mention it, but it's good time to mention it. So uh, previously I showed this picture uh, where we have um, data centers of AWS across the globe and uh, AWS caches files, which uh, are shown to the user. And sometimes you need to change that file. So you, you kind of upload new version of that file, for example, in US, but because AWS caches everything uh, across the globe, so, uh, your users from other parts of the world will, will see different images, sorry. <coughs> so, there is a two, there is two mechanism how, how to do that. Uh, let me find my Safari or Chrome. So for that reason, here in CloudFront, AWS propose something which is called invalidations. So if you want to clean all stored cache uh, st stored files in caches, you can go in here in invalidations might create an validation, put exact file name, or you can invalidate all files and press on invalidate. And AWS will contact all uh, data centers and clean caches there for your distribution, for your files. However, keep in mind that uh, this operation is not for free. So first the 1000 operations, if I invalidations, if I'm not mistaken, if for free, but all additional will be for some money, sorry. Okay, so uh, I also see that uh, our website is up and running. So just let me open it and show that it works. Yeah, I have to remove that. Ah, yeah, I forgot to add road 53 record for it. So let me do that quickly. Mm -hmm. So here we have to use alias because uh, AWS, uh, I, will, I, will sh I will explain why it's alias uh, after I will create it. Uh, so here we have to find our distribution and press on create. Uh, so let me show from technical perspective how it looks. Uh, let me talk AWS services for that. So you see, when I try to get a record, to make it even better, I'll put here as it like. When I try to uh, get a, a record from for my website, AWS DNS returns me for IP addresses. So when you have an Apex domain, like aws.yohan.net in my case here, you are not allowed to have a C name records uh, to your, for your uh, DNS. And uh, you're allowed only to have a record and only one. Uh, no, no, sorry, uh, you, you allow it to have a record. And uh, AWS might change those API addresses, which are now uh, connected to CloudFront distributions. So in order not to put your in positions that you have to update your DNS because of changes in AWS, they invented something which is called alias, 
and uh, yeah, let me press on create. And here you can uh, alias it to CloudFront distribution or load balancer, which will have several IP addresses, which might have several IP addresses. So it's still kind of a type record. However, uh, it looks more as a C name here. Hope it was clear. If not, then please uh, ask question in QA section. So now let me try to open my website once more. And it still seems that my DNS didn't get it. So I will continue and let's back to it later on. So I was talking about versioning set. Uh, you can invalidate caches around, or you can do it a little bit smarter. So smarter way is to put hash of the file into file name. So if you change application.js, Next time when you calculate hash, it will have different hash. So file name will be changed. And then when your user will come to your website, instead of downloading application.js.old hash, it will download, it will try to access application-newhash.js, right? So you will have new file with new file name and your user will try to ask them directly. However, you will still need to do invalidation, but only for a single file. And then single file is index.html because I believe index.html will, will link to all other files you will have on your uh, S3 bucket. So just remember, if for some reason you have deployed a new version of your website, but you have, but you see uh, new uh, old version of your website. So please check if uh, your invalidation works and if your file names, uh, file names of, uh, of file which you have changed uh, differs from previous version. Okay, so now it's a good time to talk about drawbacks. So for that, I need to uh, check once more is if my website, new website works, hope it works. Oh no, uh, that's bad. Uh, so one of the drawback is security. So for example, let me open that website, which is Mozilla Observatory. And here it asks me to type a uh, URL for my website. Uh, let me try once more our new website here and check if Mozilla can access, I believe it can. So let's press on scan me. So scanning is progress, it will take a few seconds. It did quite quick. And uh, you know, I assume that result will be not so good. Yeah, result will be F. Uh, why so? Because we post, uh, we put images on S3 bucket. However, uh, those images does not contain any additional metadata or uh, cookies and for that reason all requests or which we got we got we, we, we from s3 and cloudfront uh, we got without those cookies and according to the mozilla observatory it's not a good practice so i've got f so now i'll try to show the way how can how i can solve that so for that reason i also prepared something in lambda so that's a good example how to use Lambda. And uh, here I, I, I found, uh, uh, I also put in my presentation link, how to solve it. So it's official AWS. And uh, what we need to change here. So when we respond from server to cache, we have to put some headers. So end user will get that information like images or static files from cache with our additional headers. And uh, also they, <clears throat> yeah, the same F stuff here. So here is a how to, I will try to show it also. So here is a, <coughs> excuse me, here is a function uh, written for Lambda. So generally just takes everything it got and add additional information like additional headers. 
so I, I did the same yesterday. Yeah, that's the function. So that's a lambda. Uh, but let me try to create it from scratch so you can see it and uh, understand the process. So in order to create new lambda, I'll need to press on create lambda. I will do also from scratch. I will do. I, I will give it name at headers uh, workshop. So runtime, <clears throat> it allows a lot of different languages to be used. So starting with .NET, Go, Java, and uh, different Python versions. Also Java 8 is supported. I saw some questions related to it. Uh, so about permissions, as uh, we will need to use a cloud front, uh, I will need to put here I, I already created a role, but let me create one from template. So cloud formation, uh, cloud front uh, work shop and policy. We can search here for cloud front basic Lambda edge permission. So as you see, AWS, created lots of templates for us. So no need to create everything from scratch. And now after I press create function, I can go and create function itself. I will remove that stuff, put my function here. And uh, that's generally it. I'll press on deploy. And here in the I have two ways how to attach that function to CloudFront. So I can go here, press on add trigger. Here I have to choose CloudFront, deploy to Lambda Edge. So it will create a version of my function and it will uh, spread that version across all uh, edge locations. Uh, it will be uh, origin response and uh, here I have to choose correct distribution. So let me check <clears throat> name of my distribution. Uh, so that's serverless. So distribution is that one. It's here and uh, yes, I acknowledge, so deploy. So once more, it will take some time. We'll see here that's uh, Distribution is in status uh, in status in progress, but what have changed from cloud front perspective? If you go here in behaviors, and if I choose default origin, uh, press on edit. Here in the bottom, we see that uh, cloud front got a new event on origin response. It will trigger some lambda with version one. I won't edit it, so let me check that it works. So I did the same yesterday for my other bucket. Uh, so not to wait. And same behavior here, edit. You can see the same origin response. So let me use this distribution uh, just to show a mark from a Mozilla laboratory. So that was domain. And here, let's go and scan it again. Oops. So yesterday I got A plus because my re response contained all the required uh, headers by the Mo Mozilla. So you see, and how it works, uh, I, I have slides here. So each time when I request something, I, I got, I, I, I'm getting object from an S3 bucket. Here I have a Lambda, which modifies that response, adds headers. So it, it is here, not here, because I want this uh, headers to be cached rather than each time an user uh, calls the same object, uh, I will run Lambda. Instead of that, I will run Lambda only once when new requests come to the S3 bucket. So I modify my response here. Uh, CloudFront cache assist, and the next time when user will 
ask for the object, CloudFront will just give image plus headers from the uh, from the cache. So that's one drawback. So here I uh, some notes about Lambda H, and uh, that's uh, scores which I got yesterday for my website. You see, it was improved. Uh, so another drawback here is uh, CO and uh, server. Uh, client side rendering and server side rendering. So it works pretty well for client side rendering because you have static web pages which are already rendered and your browser will uh, get them and render for you. However, CEO won't work for that because uh, they want to get a ready page when they request rather and they won't uh, execute uh, your React in this case or any other JavaScript. So for example, if you want to make a website which you would like to uh, promote uh, in the Google or any other search engine, then you will need to think twice about this approach uh, because yeah, it won't render your pages. So your pages will look a little bit uh, bad and uh, Google won't be able to index them correctly. However, there is also a solution for that. You can add additional lambdas and uh, we will uh, meet API gateway later on. Uh, so instead, so you can do that server side rendering based on lambda and also cache it. But here is the thing, I, I never calculated price of the solution. So it might be that, uh, you know, you, you will get zero maintenance, however, you will get additional costs associated with uh, the additional Lambda execution to render the website on your own uh, server side rather than have it on client side. So let's say I would recommend this type of approach, I mean serverless for front end, in case when you are creating some kind of internal portal or something which you don't need to be indexed over the internet, and then, or maybe you're a startup and doing your uh, MVP or some prototype, then uh, yes, putting everything on S3 and cloud phone may, will make your life easier. And also, I believe it uh, solves lots of problem uh, for me. Uh, for example, I've been asked to create some websites for, uh, for let's say a need to put it in the social media instead of uh, being indexed. So in my case, it was pretty okay, pretty okay to create it in a serverless way. So there was no requirement uh, about indexing and about correct here. And uh, what about automations here? So AWS provides a nice tool, which is AWS Cloud Formation. And you can easily, if you have a need to create like tons of small websites here, or if you're a web agency and you would like to, uh, you know, to speed up the process and uh, decrease your costs which you're spending on ho hosting, then maybe you can use uh, AWS Cloud Formation to automate that stuff. So let me show it to you how it works. Uh, so here in AWS Console, I will use Cloud Formation service. Uh, I already have one website, but uh, let me create uh, one from scratch. Uh, I have already template, uh, which is CFYAML. Uh, let me open it so you can check how it looks. Or I will I will be able to see it in AWS, so there will be no need to, to open it. Okay, so I will, I will be pressing on next and uh, here it uh, asks for name, uh, let's say demo one. Uh, so it asks hosted zone ID of S3 bucket or cloud front. I do not really remember what that is. So I will use it from a different website I have here. Uh, it was in parameters. I believe it's static across all uh, stuff. Environment, uh, you might have different environment. Uh, in my case, it just, uh, uh, so for example, if I use dev stage or test, it will add uh, suffix to the domain name. In case of production, it will add nothing. 
And here, for example, we can put serverless onesyefnet So let's press a next, next, create stack. And it started to do something. So it started to create different resources in AWS. So I will leave it as it is. It will also, so uh, let me show template here. Uh, so it will create S3 bucket uh, with uh, website configuration. It will uh, use index.html and uh, as an index document and same as an error document. Uh, it will also create website DNS record, which is cool. So because I have a rule 53 here, it, it, it should work. It also will create cloud from distribution and it will also create a S3 certificate. The only thing is that uh, it semi-automated because uh, that SS, uh, SSL certificate will require me to go and approve it, press on the button. Uh, frankly, I, I was looking a little bit and I found a way how to automate it fully, uh, but uh, it won't be able uh, using cloud formation. Uh, I have to use uh, serverless stack. Uh, it allows to create some custom resources and it allows to create lambdas which will uh, trigger uh, which will uh, create in row 53 record for SSL certificate. But as for now, I'm okay to once to go here and uh, yeah, see my pending certificate request. So I'll create and I will create. So it will take some time because of CloudFront, but that's an automated and a quick way how to create uh, website and if you have you know 10 or more per day you can easily do it that this way so that was it uh, next part of uh, my workshop will be about databases and i already like first question was about uh, practical experience regarding uh, sql databases uh, so that's a reminder. So we, we were talking about front end and now we will be talking about data. So we have backend left. So for serverless, AWS pro proposes to use DynamoDB, uh, which is no SQL database, no relational database. Uh, but let me show it a little bit and uh, maybe for some cases it will be good for you. I, I do understand that if you already choose SQL database, then you have some reasons for that. Uh, yeah, it's still creating here. So let me go to DynamoDB and just show how easy is that. So you don't need to install server. You don't need to think about maintenance. Uh, you don't need to think about other stuff. So just open AWS console, go to DynamoDB, create table, uh, give it some name, uh, server less. Uh, primary key we can put, for example, ID. Uh, I don't like here is different uh, types, but let's leave it string. So I, I will press on create and just in a few seconds, I believe AWS will provision that database for me. So it's it's up and running. I can see items, so there is nothing. And uh, one thing that I would like to show here is uh, capacity. So yeah. It allows to have auto scaling, meaning that uh, when you have more and more read and write requests, you will, you will pay more for it. However, when you have less, then it will scale down and you will pay less for it. But for example, for them, I just want to show uh, this minimal um, uh, possible amount here, which is one, the price of uh, DynamoDB. So it's just 60 cents per month. So I, I believe you have a question, what does this one mean? So if I understand correctly documentation from AWS, it will be one read, uh, read per second for the database. So when you will have second one within the same time, you, it will need to wait for the second, uh, next second. So I'll press on save here. And uh, yeah, the database is updated so you can easily work with it. So let me show you one more Lambda, which I already also prepared for this workshop. Mm, yeah. So Lambda is called uh, DynamoDB put item. Uh, I prefer 
Python. So that one, this one have been written in Python. Uh, so it, it's quite easy. Uh, you have both two, three model, which uh, gives you a possibility to access every, uh, I believe every uh, AWS service. So you just need to define how to connect to it. So resource DynamoDB and there is some endpoint URL. Uh, you have to choose which is uh, which database you would like to update. So in my case here, I, I created another uh, database, which is users, but uh, let's change to the server last name. So it's better example. And what I'm doing on each time when I run this uh, Lambda function, I will update database just with uh, two values. One is ID, which will be taken a, a random value from this list and just you know for demo. And second one is uh, UID, which will be uh, uh, randomly generated UID uh, format for. So yeah, I, I did some changes in table name. So I'll press on the play here, so it will save it. And now I can press on test. So it did something and uh, yeah, you see that there is null because I didn't put here to to put output any information. But one thing you have to remember that it took 160 milliseconds. I believe it's a quite big amount of time for such a short and small operation. You have to remember that every time when you start Lambda, there, there will be a small delay. Because AWS have to start Docker container, I believe it's Docker container and run the Lambda for you somewhere. So if you need a, a responsive uh, backend, like which is responding in a milliseconds, that might be that Lambda is not the best option for you, or you have to play with different options here because Lambda allows uh, a little bit of uh, con some configurations there. So let me back to my uh, database and let's see items, let's refresh. And we can see that some random six and some UID have been put here. So if you need to store some uh, small amount of data, not, not only small amount of data, but if you need to store non-relational -rela database uh, data, then maybe DynamoDB would be good for you. Okay, uh, let's go back. So that's DynamoDB and we had some demo about it. And for SQL stuff, here is uh, my SQL and Postgres uh, SQL compatible uh, versions. Uh, the cool stuff about them is that you are not charged for the time while the database is used. You are built only on uh, database storage and input output over the 24 hour period. So it might be a, a answer for the first question uh, about using SQL database, uh, I should uh, say that uh, for some reason I haven't used Aurora serverless for now. Uh, I'm planning to use it uh, later and uh, play with it a little bit more. Uh, but in, in the project I've been working on, we haven't used Aurora uh, serverless for now. So yeah, I can't comment, is it good or bad uh, to use it. Okay, but it's, at least we have two options. And uh, when you are planning or uh, thinking about how to create your serverless uh, website or portal, you may think about using DynamoDB or Aurora serverless. So, and the last part of this, it's a backend. So from my perspective, I can uh, try to simplify backend in this picture as that uh, nowadays it's in most cases is monolithic when you have one application or you have uh, different microservices running on uh, Kubernetes or uh, EC2 instances or anything else. And each of them use uh, own database. Uh, also about database, you have to have some application uh, for backend, sorry. You have to use some application server like uh, Tomcat or uh, if like if you use Spring, then for sure you will have Tomcat inside. Maybe you will have Apache if you use PHP or uh, something like that. And uh, in most cases, back backend, uh, it will be dockerized. So you will run it as a Docker container 
inside the Kubernetes or inside EC2 instance. Or also you can run it as a auto scaling group in AWS or any other uh, virtual server in any other cloud. So for serverless, for sure, as we have been talking about Lambda, Lambda is a key there. So for serverless, AWS proposed to use Lambda because uh, in that case, like you just have your small function, which will do some job for you. You will post, uh, you will deploy it to AWS and uh, one time when you need it, you will just run it. And uh, the best benefit of that from AWS perspective is uh, that you pay only for the compute time. So there is no need to start a server. And for example, you're a startup and you have like 10 or 20 visitors per day. So you will need to start a virtual server in AWS or any other cloud provider. And all day you will have that server up and running. And if you would like to have a, some redundancy, then you will have at least two servers. Then you will have two server servers just to serve, for example, 20 requests. And, and it's kind of wasting money because you will be paying for servers doing nothing. With Lambda, you will pay just for the time when Lambda will run. And it also pushes you to make Lambda in, Lambdas in the way that uh, they are efficient. So they're not having lots of dependencies inside and uh, they are as small as possible and they run as fast as possible. So you will save money there. And also uh, second part is about uh, zero administration. So same example with servers. If you want to have a redundancy, then you will need to start at least two servers or you need to start autoscaling group. And then when you have, uh, when you, you will need to uh, have some monitoring which will tell you that uh, everything is up and running. Uh, you will also have to have some monitoring related to PCPU memory and uh, hard drive usage. I believe that nowadays hard drive is not a problem. Like we have lots of terabytes in uh, cloud providers, but still when you create instance, you will have to lock amount of uh, uh, gigabytes for your hard drive. And if you have some problems with logging, then you might easily have uh, no free space error there. But with Lambda, you don't have such problems, right? You just use it and I do, AWS will take care about uh, infrastructure and environment for it. And second server, the service which AWS uh, proposes for uh, serverless backend stuff, it's an API gateway. So here's a definition of API gateway from AWS website. Uh, I would try to explain it as a entry point for your backend and uh, where you can configure what to do with different requests and the different type of methods uh, of your requests. So let me try to show it to you, but here might be front door is a, a best explanation of what this API gateway. So let me switch to another service here and that is API gateway. I will use the same region is uh, North Virginia. And let me get started here. Uh, I will put new API. So let's uh, put name of my API serverless, some description serverless. Here it proposed to have it regional. Uh, yeah, we can have regional because it's uh, yeah to save some money. So let's create API and uh, here is a nice constructor. So you, you are able to define method and resource. For example, I would like for resource uh, slash hello. Sorry, I have to remove that. Uh, I'll create a resource hello and uh, for resource hello, I will create a method for example, get, or I can put any, but let's put get. So here it, it asks me, what do you want to do if user will hit slash hello uh, with uh, my method get? And we have different possibilities here. So for sure, I would like to use Lambda 
function. Uh, so I believe I've created the lambda function in the U central one. Let me check. Remember that hello world function I showed in the beginning. So let's hit it. Uh, let's press on save. Okay. I will be given some permissions for the lambda. And uh, here I have to deploy API. So after I did some changes, I am okay to do deploy. And uh, yeah, let's create a new stage. Let's call it dev uh, development and press on deploy. So now we have some URL. So that is base URL and let me hit it so i have created their hello with method get yes something doesn't work for me i will get forbidden no i've got a response from my lambda you see the same status code 200 body hello from lambda so just to prove that it works uh, let me go to that lambda let uh, me go to last one. No, it was in uh, central. Yeah, that one. So here I will, I'll change hello to hello workshoppers. Uh, let me check if DynamoDB connects to correct one. So I will be able to, yeah, it's in your central. So I, I hope I save it my Lambda. Yes, I save it my Lambda. Let me try to hit it once more. Yeah, you see the result is different. So what I did just, I defined an API and on some call to that API, API gateway started Lambda, which did something and uh, returned the result. So let me try to do the same with another one, which was uh, about to get uh, to, to add information to DynamoDB. So uh, let me, uh, sorry, let me create resource, which will be update, for example, and uh, in that update, method let to post uh, the same stuff here lambda function i believe i have that in uh, us yeah and here is yeah the dynamo db put item save okay so once more, I need to deploy. I need to choose my deployment stage, deploy. So here I will use another URL, which is update. Uh, yeah, it, it is showing some missing authentication token, but uh, because I have to put post request, And result should be null. Yeah, the result is null. And let me check my DynamoDB uh, instance here. So I have some tables, I have serverless table, and uh, I have to have two records here, yes. So let me try to hit it once more. And you see one more record is here. So with call to some API gateway, I will be able to update my database, which is pretty cool. And you know, you might say that, okay, the domain name is not so good here. So what we can do with the domain name, you can also have a custom domain name here, configure it and uh, map your custom domain name to that uh, API gateway. That's something you can do on your own. And uh, one thing which is cool
cool and which AWS uh, did uh, created or not created, but uh, announced it recently as it's a client certificate. That's something I would like to play with. So generally it allows you to ver verify your request by, uh, okay, sorry. So it allows to build an, an API, which will be protected by SSL and your client will be will need to provide a valid SSL certificate signed by your authority. So it's a kind of additional level of security. I believe that some uh, people who are working with uh, financial startups might might heard about client certificate and also about uh, two fact, uh, sorry, uh, mutual authentication. So that's it here. Let me go next. And it's time to tell about the different triggers, how we can trigger Lambda. So what I've did, I've triggered Lambda via API gateway. Uh, so in this way, you can also have some asynchronous events uh, like SNS, it's a simple notification service and uh, AWS S3. So uh, once one, one my client asked me to pre uh, prepare or create a prototype of the website, uh, which do next. So he has an uh, S3 bucket and uh, people were able to upload there some uh, files and he wanted those files to be processed and uh, change it or notify someone about that. Oh, okay, there is a new file. And also you can uh, have a streaming to Lambda and uh, use or invoke Lambda on some changes in uh, Amazon DynamoDB or Kinesis services. So here is some conclusions. Uh, so a AWS provides uh, really nice services, Lambda and API gateway to, to build your API, to build your backend in a serverless manner. So you don't worry about uh, uptime, you don't worry about maintenance. Yeah, I have to show one more thing here about uh, API gateway, uh, <clears throat> which is related to deployment. So for example, uh, it, we have stages and uh, uh, let me create uh, another stage, which is broad. So I, I can choose which deployment I did. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't give description to the deployment. So I can deploy it and then kind of promote to stage at all uh, another environment or another uh, API gateway. Okay, so AWS provides us uh, really nice services, which is uh, Lambda and uh, API gateway. Uh, it, pricing model is pretty nice. Like you pay for what you use rather than uh, rather than uh, paying for service which are staying and waiting. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you're paying uh, like it. Uh, lambdas are pretty easy to uh, scale, so I can try to run here AB benchmark uh, Apache benchmark AB command to to have multiple requests, and you know there won't be need for me to scale and add more services servers. Uh, with my application, uh, AWS will run as much lambdas as possible. However, there is also limits and uh, you can configure everything uh, from AWS console or from CLI. Uh, and uh, I believe it's uh, easy box fix because for Lambda, instead of having one big application or even having uh, microservices, you kind of need to drop them into smaller one, like these small applications. Okay, you, you will have a little bit bigger applications, but still you will have you will have them. And uh, don't think that uh, in order to use the Lambda, you have to use that web uh, portal and uh, put your code here. You can do everything with AWS CLI. And also uh, you can upload uh, your for function here rather than uh, have rather than edit. You see here is a, fun, a possibility to upload a zip file. So you can uh, package your uh, function or your uh, function, uh, application into zip file and upload it uh, through AWS CLI. 
Okay, and uh, there is also some drawbacks. Uh, I believe that for each, uh, it might be not a drawbacks, it might be really cool uh, that you can separate deployment pipelines for each functionality. So for example, uh, when you need to fix just uh, one API, you don't need to redeploy whole application, but you will just redeploy that, that part. And I believe that in the Lambda, you will have zero downtime deployments. And uh, for sure, if you want to use an um, API gateway in Lambda, you will need to redo your uh, applications. So Lambda will require some handlers stuff and uh, you will need to include some AWS libraries, for example, if you're using Java. So it's not so simple like you're just copy paste your text, uh, your code here and you have Lambdas. No, you will need to migrate it. Uh, so you will need to spend some efforts on that. And I believe that not every business would like to, you know, to change current uh, application and spend some uh, money and time on migrating. And uh, here is uh, it. So that's everything I wanted to show. And uh, yeah, I, I've got a little bit more time uh, for questions and answers. And uh, I would like to hear your opinion if you think that Lambda is good for you. And also I will keep uh, this uh, QR code for here. So if you have any questions after our q and session, just feel free to poke me in LinkedIn. That's a easy way to share with your LinkedIn uh, URL. So that's it. I believe it's a good time for questions. Yeah, I think so as well. I would also add that uh, I guess if, if you're on that, that you're most probably could be reached on the Slack channel for AWS Community Baldus. Uh, I believe it. Yeah. Uh, so please share uh, details how to reach that Slack if not everyone is there. Mm -hmm. I, I will do that once again. I, I did that at the beginning, and maybe we should start from uh, uh, Elders uh, noticed in the chat that uh, it's an awesome demo and well done. <laughs> so you already got some uh, some congratulations. Yes, and so yeah, let me then I will I will go through the QA questions and I believe okay. there is already a discussion. So I, I would say that it would be really nice, you know. Um, my experience here is I'm in DevOps. And uh, I, I would like my role or my uh, uh, my goal here was to show how everything looks from DevOps perspective. And for sure I would be able to answer some development related questions. I, I never done some code. Okay, I did some scripting. I, I don't call it a code. It's a, it's, a, it's a scripting, like a Python or JavaScript code I showed. Uh, but I believe that it would be nice if uh, all of guys here with questions you have, you can join uh, our Slack channel and there we, will, we can discuss that and maybe, you know, just uh, give each other some nice links. So uh, yeah, like may, maybe it will help. And uh, also I believe that uh, AWS have most of the answers you have here. Uh, unfortunately, it's just a matter of time to find correct answer and correct link. But uh, you know, during my preparation for this uh, workshop, I was uh, looking into AWS resources and they are quite good everywhere. Like they, they contain lots of nice, useful information. Okay, so I'll start this question. I would love to hear about practical experience regarding how well serverless go with SQL databases. This is the only reason for aren't using serverless but Kubernetes. And uh, uh, there is nice uh, answers from Christian Eric Liu. Sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly. Uh, it's a latency. And as it says that for a new connection, uh, you will have uh, for a new Lambda invocation, uh, you will have a uh, a uh, new connections uh, connection to be made and that's true you know uh, i've tried already uh, also to show it here with my example so each time it's a simple code which will uh, trigger some api which will start lambda and lambda will start connection to database updated with two simple values and uh, let me put time so we can see how much time it took. So it's just, it's about, okay, it's, it, it, it was cached, I believe, by AWS. But yes, uh, keep in mind that using Lambda gives you additional latency for everything you do there. 
just uh, you know if you have if you need to have responsive uh, backend it might be not a good case but i would still uh, would be happy if you can spend some time and discover it okay uh, so next one have you tried migrating some java code to lambda using quark on spring frameworks instead of using node.js runtime can you please comment on warm and cold startup time and hints how to improve performance uh, yes in my full-time job we are using some uh, lambda function written with spring framework and uh, let's say we spend some time on removing all unnecessary dependencies so we we have that lambda java code shortened as possible uh, because you know more you have more time it will need to start it and same here it will uh, there will be some cold start so yes uh, you will you will feel the latency I, I believe that for said for that reason you know I, I really tend to use python or javascript because uh, you don't need to compile them it, it might be working a little bit quicker and uh, also i believe there was some uh some configuration, maybe it's related to provisioning, uh, but yeah, I haven't used any uh, hints to, I, I don't have any hints how to improve performance. Uh, so yeah, let, let me find it and reach me out in Slack and I'll try to answer uh, that question. Okay. Uh... Yeah, I see one more question. That's also been answered and also in, 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 in the chat uh, uh, by, by Augustus, uh, how to schedule Lambda like to run yeah. once every hour. I, I saw this idea about CloudWatch. Uh, do you agree with, with that suggestion as well? Yes. Um, so first of all, uh, maybe I haven't uh, shown that really nice, but let me check to North Virginia. Uh, you know, uh, okay, sorry. I will back here and explain why I'm switching to North Virginia. So. Here, you can add trigger for your Lambda in the uh, left panel. And if you are using Frankfurt or any other region, uh, region uh, which, is, uh, not North, which is not North Virginia, then you will have shortened list. But still, you will have uh, CloudWatch, for example, here, but it's for login. So uh, let me switch to North Virginia. Let me pick up any Lambda I have here. So for example, uh, DynamoDB pod. Um, that's not that. I'm sure that I've seen it here, Cloud Front. Uh, no, it's not that one. Nope. Okay, I, I will need to check, but I believe that with, uh, yeah, uh, with uh, even bridge, uh, you can create a rule. And here you have schedule expression. So yes, it's possible we can try to put it, uh, for example, uh, right one day. And like you can play here with, uh, all right, one minute, role name, workshop. Create new role and press on it. So I believe that now in my uh, database, we'll see more and more. So we have five and let's see in a minute if we'll have six. So uh, same one more question I have here is about uh, Java and Lambda, but I can run just my one Java project like Lambda. I need to add some dependency in form file. I believe that you can run. I. I honestly don't have such experience running uh, with Lambda and my Maven, uh, but uh, you know, reach me out in the Slack and I will try to help you with uh, adding form dependency. Uh, so next one, 
pull SSM from API Gateway. I believe that uh, I'm not sure if uh, API Gateway can run uh, something different to what is here. So for example, let me create one more method, which is any. And uh, here is what you can trigger. So I believe that uh, if you want uh, to trigger some shell script uh, from API Gateway, which is on EC2 instance, then most probably you will need to have a Lambda as a, uh, in between. So you, you can call API Gateway, which will call a Lambda, which will uh, run SSM, uh, which will run uh, bash script on EC2 instance. But maybe there is something uh, different you can do and uh, run it in different way. Uh, so I believe that's it for questions. Uh, uh, did you answer the questions regarding Java code? Uh, like both of them? Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah. Okay. yeah. So uh, I saw a few uh, uh, shorter ones in, in, in the chat. So one of them was, uh, can we do certificate creation from cloud formation by code? Uh, Okay, where do we have, oh, okay, sorry, chat, let me open chat, sorry, Helen. Uh, okay, so, yeah. So, um, creation from cloud formation by code, um, thing is that I would, uh, I would propose you to use a serverless framework, as uh, I believe it's called SSM, let me find it. Yes, something like that. So it creates something like CloudFormation template and it allows you additional flexibility over the code and over the stuff you're creating. So with, with serverless uh, framework, I was able to create uh, SS, uh, SSL certificate and automatically create row 53 records for you. So trick was to create a Lambda which uh, checks for the DNS records required. And when it appeared, Lambda just added those uh, DNS records or DNS records to row 53. So that's was the way how I fully automate creation of uh, certificate and uh, uh, cloud formation, and uh, sorry, uh, from uh, certificate cloud front and uh, S3 bucket. Uh, there was one more question regarding the cache in the cloud front like how much uh, does the cache live there and uh, can we can the time be configured uh, i believe so i believe it's one day but uh, let me check that you know uh, I, I would also propose uh, people to get the aws certification because uh, during my preparation to uh, certification i've got uh, I, I was preparing by course and uh, I, uh, in that course, I mentioned lots of small details like this, you know, you, you never think what is, you know, that cache uh, TTL or what is, for example, uh, SLA for S3, but uh, when you need to prepare to certification and that's part of the certification, they ask you those uh, numbers, uh, then yes, you have to remember them. So let me go to CloudFront. And uh, here, I believe, uh, oh, it's not here. Let me try to create one more new one. And it might be in the options. Uh, cached methods, cache policy. Uh, compress class standard and uh, okay I can't find but I believe it's possible uh, but I will need to google for it and let you know okay and there's one more question uh, uh, like maybe like lambda looks perfect for simple tasks adding entry to dynamo db etc but 
What about if you have full working application with authentication, authorizations, and reusing of other parts of application? How that can be reused from simple Lambda function? Um, any ideas? Uh, yeah, so uh, I forgot to mention about Cognita. That's another AWS service which allows you to build your all authentication uh, and authorization. It's uh, IAM, right? And uh, uh, I've been playing, like I had a need to secure one website with uh, Cognito. And uh, for me, it was quite easy to Google and uh, find a AWS uh, Cognito service uh, cloud formation template, which starts uh, Cognito, create some user pool there. Uh, which starts S3 bucket and all requests and, and also add some Lambda functions. So all the time when someone calls your uh, website, uh, there is invocation of Lambda. It checks if you have a authentication header and if not, then it will redirect to, to Cognito and will uh, ask you to log in. So if you want to build something which requires authentication, please check AWS Cognito, which, which is really pow powerful and cool service. I guess you are muted. Oh, you are muted. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry for that. yeah, so um, at least I don't see any more questions. Uh, so if we have uh, nothing else from from the audience so um i guess then we can close the the the, the workshop and uh, uh we i would like to do that with uh, a final poll uh about regarding the your feedback on on the on the overall event just please answer those uh, two questions that uh, you'll see now you know it's it's very important for, for both uh, me and Evan to to you know to to see how you how you liked it and was it useful and uh, yeah of course last but not least uh, uh, please join the aws community baltic channel on slack and i have inserted the invite link in in, in the chat and i'm sure you'll find a lot of useful information there and then like-minded people like uh, like evan himself um evan is there anything else you would like to add uh, yeah, thank you for uh, everyone for attending this uh, workshop. I hope you find uh, something useful for yourself. Uh, please feel free to find uh, us in uh, uh, Baltics channel, uh, AWS Community Baltics channel, and uh, we will be happy to help with any AWS question you have, uh, like if you can answer. Great. Uh, so I'm ending the poll. Uh, yeah, and you can see the results. Uh, I, uh, I imagine that uh, from what I see, everybody liked the demos uh, most, which is uh, something we, we expected. Uh, so um, I guess then I can all I can say is, is thank you everyone. And uh, I'm looking forward to uh, seeing all of you in, in the next event uh, we'll be having with uh, Cloudvisor. So until uh, the next time. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Thanks for attending.